I think uh, this is one of the largest gathering of uh, diplomats, probably outside Delhi. And uh, Excellencies, the ambassadors, the high commissioners, counselor generals, and other distinguished dignitaries from across the world. Representatives from Mongolia, Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Canada, Egypt, Estonia, Georgia, Indonesia, Japan, and the list goes on. I thank all of you for coming over here, and I welcome you, all of you, as well. More than 30 countries, more than 50 representatives, 16 ambassadors, all of them, I sincerely thank from the deepest of my heart. Today, I think you know this is one of the many one of the unique initiative what uh, is being started over here, and uh, the sincere thanks to central government for actually coming forward to make this a reality. There is no there is. Uh, I think all of you here are already aware of the state's background. I would not say that, you know, we are a very developed state, we have everything on a platter. I wouldn't say that. You know, we are a poor state, there's no denial of that. We don't have a tier one city like Hyderabad or a Bangalore or a Chennai. I wouldn't deny that as well. But we have our inherent strengths. We have 975 kilometers of coastline. We have four, four ports, six airports. To begin with, this is our strength. And above all, adding to our strength, I'd like to say, I'd like to speak a few words about the governance. One very important thing what attracts investment is how stable the government is. And I can take pride in telling you that an overwhelming mandate was given to us. We have out of 175 uh, MLAs constituencies, we scored 86% of the seats, 151 plus seats. And as far as the parliamentarians are concerned, we are also proud to say that we are the fourth largest party in the country, the number of parliament seats. And we are also proud to say that we share a phenomenal good relationships with the central government, and as well as the neighboring Telugu state of Telangana as well. Not to ignore Tamil Nadu, the adjoining state as well, and Karnataka as well. So the ties with the neighboring states are phenomenal. Central government support is there. There's an overwhelming mandate in our favor. This could also add to our strength when we market ourselves to the outside world. And uh, speaking of what we can do to facilitate better trade, I can just speak of one or two very important aspects what would actually be a deal clincher. Today, most of the governments suffer in providing corrupt-free government, in providing transparent policies. This I take pride to say that our government here is committed to providing corrupt-free government, a transparent policy in place, a fair policy, 
what is very important to attract investment. This is very, very important, and, uh, and I think we will stand as a role model in delivering these commodities. We recently passed an enactment in the assembly, in the just concluded assembly, and this enactment is the first in the country, and I think it will, set, it will set a new standard for the country as well in bringing about transparency at the highest level in every transaction what takes place in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I think a uh, few of uh, the 60 days of our governance Once you want to give, to speak about the 60 days of our governance so far, everybody stands here and, you know, all of us stand here and then we say, we've done that, we've done this, we've done phenomenally well and all those things. But I think uh, most of them here also are aware of reading the newspapers, reading in the news, also aware of, you know, few of the revolutionary decisions that we've taken also, what probably are slightly controversial also. I think that also lingers in few of the heads as well. This also, I think I should address these things in order to give you confidence. Because otherwise there's no point. Everything what we do should have honesty. Everything should, everything what we should, what we, what we ought to do should have commitment. I think sincerity and commitment and honesty, these are the things what actually drive anybody to come and have faith in us. If we do not deliver those, then there is no commitment, there is no faith, there is no honesty. Then you will have no takers. Few of the things what uh, actually I would speak about, what is very important because you know you should see the other side of the story as well because what you read in the newspapers, what you read in the news is one side of the story and I don't know if it's fully been narrated. The other side of the story also, I think I'll just bring forth on two important aspects. One aspect is, uh, we've recently made a decision to renegotiate on the power purchase agreements, especially these high rate power purchase agreements. It's probably slightly controversial when it comes to you know, speaking of a state to do something like that. But I'd just like to draw your attention to one simple aspect. What is the point in having a power purchase agreement if the discoms are not in a position to pay your bills. By the time I got into the Chief Minister's post two months before, it's only been two months since I got into this seat, into this place that I am in. And by the time I had come here and I had taken a review of the discoms, the electricity position there, the discoms position, the officers told me that we had 20,000 crores of arrears. 20,000 crores of pending bills, arrears. The government was not paying bills for the past one, one year to one and a half year. And what is the point in having these PPAs? Will it add any value? Number one, it doesn't add any value. The discoms are already crumbling. So what do we do? If we are to be sincere about our cause, if we are to do something about it, we need to do something about it, even though they are slightly controversial. So what we did was, you know, we need to give a win-win formula for everybody. So we are trying to renegotiate. I, I do agree that, you know, there are international communities there, there are banks there, and we need to give them confidence as well while we renegotiate. So we're coming out with a win-win formula policy as well, where, you know, we're bringing them to reality, seeing that discoms do not work like that, they not fun cannot function like this, when the revenues are lower and cost of procurement is far higher, then no discom can ever function. And the only way we can do this is to bring a sustainable model where the rates come down, where probably investment could be treated as debt with a soft loan. Now these kind of innovative policies, if we don't come out with, there'll be nothing left of us, nothing left of us to offer anybody anything. And also another important thing is, most of these subsidies, most of, these, uh, most of the income what comes to us, 
comes from the industrial sector because these are the people who actually pay up. We have a lot of cross-subsidy, what, what I think any government probably anywhere in the world would do to the farming community and to the other sectors. So the, these, these sectors do not pay much. They just cross-subsidy. The sectors what pay are the industry. And if our cost of procurement is high, then what do we do? We mark up something on that and then we sell to the industry. And if the industrial tariff is high, then how do we make ourselves competitive? How do we attract investments? So it's got to be a bold decision taken somewhere along the line where honesty is required, commitment is required, and sincerity is required. And that's what we did. This is the other side of our controversial, one of the controversial decisions what we took. Then there's another policy also, what might actually raise a few concerns if the full version of the story is not told to. And that is, we recently enacted 75% local reservations. You know, this is also one, you know, and it, it all depends on how you look at it. When we speak of America also today, we have a situation there in America where the government there also is talking about local jobs. This is the situation what is prevalent all over the world. And today, any industry what comes up anywhere, it adds to pollution, whether it is small quantum or whether the quantum is large, it all depends on the factory that's coming up. But every industry, every factory com what comes up adds a little bit to the pollution. And why would anybody give lands to them willingly if they have no hope of getting a job? But this is something what one should actually look at it in a very proactive way, that this is pro-industry. You know, we need to give people hope that we welcome industry. Why would anybody welcome industry? When there is hope that you will get a job somewhere in that industry, that factory, that people would actually start welcoming that industry. People would actually want the factories to come, want the industries to come. So this should be tre treated as a proactive step, wherein we would actually welcome. Then the other issue is, what about the talent? What about the skills? That would probably be one, be one of the questions what anybody would ask. And here we have a clear-cut policy in place. Before the industry is set up, before the groundbreaking ceremony takes place, you give us the list of what is the qualification that you're looking at. And once we have a list of your qualification, we will work with you together in developing that skill. We will make every parliament one particular uh, segment. And in that every parliament, we will develop, we will take, a, we will adopt one engineering college there, and we will set up a, we will set up a fact, we will set up an office there, skill development center there, and we will actively participate with you, work with you, you to actually develop these skills. We're not asking for funding there because we will support our children there to develop these skills, but we would definitely want you to support on the teaching faculty part of it so that our people would be trained good enough so that they're acceptable to you at every level. And we've made this local a concept because if this is not addressed, then you will have so much of unrest everywhere. What is the point in coming and setting up a factory there if people are not going to support the version? There is so much of unrest actually taking place everywhere. If my state is not an exception, every state and every state in the country is is also having this difficulty. So it's very important that these needs are met with. So, so the other side of a controversial decision would also have to be looked in a very proactive way. So these are the two things what we actually took in these 60 days. While we've taken the third step is to actually call on you today, take the initiative today to explain ourselves that this is the reason that we've done this. And uh, there is sincerity in this, and uh, we require your cooperation and support in, in every way. This is reality. Yes.
What Andhra, what Andhra Pradesh can offer you, well, these are the issues, what I think, uh, what I'd be just taking a few more minutes to just explain to you. You know, what we can offer you is we have a big coastline, 970 kilometers an odd coastline. We have four ports, as I've spoken earlier. We have 13 districts, out of which six districts have already have an airport. We're going to enhance these ports. By the end of these, by the end of these five years, we will actually be coming up with four more ports. So that would make basically eight ports. Uh, as I have said earlier, with these ports, we would add value. What we can offer is, Andhra Pradesh need what Andhra Pradesh needs, I would say. Aqua products, I think, you know, Harish, uh, Harish and I just spoke some time back about uh, the blue, the blue economy and uh, what kind of aqua exports we have. What kind of, and he also spoke about the rice bowl for the country being from here. But what we are lagging also, I would just speak about it, where we need your support and where we need your help is to come up with, you know, build standards for global markets. This is something what we need your help on. You know, our, we manufacture products, but are they to the global standards? That is something where we need your help. You know, we also want these gaps, uh, good agricultural practices, the global standards. These global standards, both in ac aqua as well as agriculture sector, we require your help to come forward. We would work together so that our standards improve, so that we are globally competitive as well. So that, you know, we help each other in a, in a big way, be it agriculture, be it uh, uh, the marine part of it. Our productivity is one other area where, you know, we have ample, we have ample land. But I was just discussing with uh, uh, Harish the other day, and uh, these are the things what uh, needs improvement. For instance, we have coffee, where uh, per acre yield in coffee of ours is 250 kgs. And uh, in Vietnam, I was told, is seven to eight tons. 7,000 kgs to 8,000 kgs is what I was told. You know, these kind of innovation, innovatives, innovative practices to improve productivity and yield, this would be something what we would also love to collaborate on. And then we have uh, opportunities exist in uh, seaports, investment could be sought, airports, investment could be sought, refineries, investments could, investments could be sought, steel projects, investments could be, could be sought, and uh, water management investment could be sought. Mobilization of financial resources for the state would be one important area where we could come along in a very big way. Projects such as interlinking of what interlinking of rivers. We have a situation where we are the fag end state, we are the tail end state. So we have a situation where uh, interlinking of rivers are, is a very essential part to stabilize this agrarian economy. We have a situation where uh, we need your help there to interlink uh, Godavari to Krishna where to stabilize the water needs there, where both of us can come together in a very big way. Uh, we need clean drinking water, where we both of us can come together in a very big way. Uh, we need, uh, we're also wanting to bring about green revolution, where we want to actually uh, scrap the diesel buses, the public transport system of diesel, and get into electrical buses in a very big way. 
So this could also be an opportunity where both of us, uh, all of us could come together in a very big way. Food processing, uh, research universities, uh, airports and seaports I've just uh, mentioned earlier. Metro rail also in Vishakhapatnam is something what uh, has been seriously contemplated. That could also be an area where we could come, where we could work together in a very big way. Of course, uh, uh, Vijaywada and Guntur also, Metro Rail also, is a proposal that we have in mind. And uh, also support for our uh, uh, innovative welfare schemes. You know, what we have contempl what we are con uh, contemplating, you know, we've, people of the state have given this kind of mandate, uh, what was never experienced in our state. And uh, to be very sincere, this kind of mandate has come because people's expectations are so much so high. And uh, we have a situation where we need a lot of welfare schemes to also go by. Because, you know, our illiteracy rate, if you were to speak about, if country's illiteracy rate is 26%, our illiteracy rate is 33%. If uh, Gross enrollment ratio is to be spoken about. Gross enrollment ratio is 18 years to 23 years, children who are being enrolled into the colleges, enrolled into the universities, into the colleges. If those rates were to be spoken about, and we usually compare our economy with BRICS, if that were to be compared, Russia would speak about an enrollment, gross enrollment ratio of 81%. China would speak about 48%, Brazil would speak about 50%, whereas our enrollment ratio is only 25%. So these are the areas where you know, we could actually work together in a very big way in improving our society, in uh, bringing into focus, as, I re as I've recently spoken about, agrarian situation. We are basically an agrarian community uh, with uh, 62% of our population totally dependent only on agriculture, where, where there are a lot of good, in, good schemes that the state government has thought about to improve the uh, life situation of the farmers, of the riots, where help would be solicited. A modernization of schools, modernization of hospitals, to everything else, where countries who could uh, play a big role in coming together to help us in a very big way. So all these opportunities, uh, uh, all these uh, things what uh, I think uh, I've spoken in depth. All what I'd like to say is, uh, while, while I just spoke about the narratives, what my state could offer and what uh, my state is all about, all what I can say now is, uh, I thank you all for coming over here and uh, with uh, sincerity at utmost level, I say that we are committed to working with you with all sincerity and uh, you have an honest government and you have a very proactive team and uh, we would definitely mark on transparency and uh, corruption free government at highest level to give you some confidence to that extent. And uh, I think once after me, I think you'd have uh, presentations from uh, uh, six presentations would come through. Uh, our chief secretary would pr present on the development agenda and uh, uh, the other principal secretaries would speak about uh, industry and investment, uh, social welfare programs, Navaratnalu that we boast about, health, tourism, uh, Buddhist, and uh, animal husbandry and fisheries. All these things uh, the principal secretaries would follow up uh, after my speech here. And we have 30 secretaries uh, sitting down here readily available for any of you having any kind of uh, uh, doubt. Uh, all the 30, we have 30 secretaries 
station here, and uh, they will be very glad. We, we, we would be very glad to assist you, to, to help you in any of the doubts what you have, to clear those doubts and, you know, so that we could come together in a big way. And uh, I thank you all f for once again for coming over here with all sincerity. Thank you.